everybody, thank you guys so much for joining me today. We have a really fun class for you with Michaels, and we're so excited to be partnering up with them. Just a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, I wanted to let you know that I do have a person here with me. So any questions that you have, please put them in the chat board. I'm not gonna be able to read them, but he will be able to say them out loud to me and I can respond to you that way. Um, I might be able to read them, but I'm pretty much will have my hands and eyes focused on the project. Um, today, we're working with Fabric Mod Podge and just a quick backstory on Fabric Mod Podge. This is the formula of Mod Podge that will allow you to adhere fabric to fabric and it will be machine washable. Um, I don't know how many of you are planning on crafting along with me today. If I'm going too fast, please let me know and I can slow down. Um, I want to share with you some of the projects that we're going to be working with. Um, today, I'm going to show you a really simple technique for making a um, pencil case or cosmetic bag. I actually use this for my receipts. Um, and we're going to show you how you can cover shoes um with fabric and i'm going to show you a really simple technique for the tote bag the tote bag and the zipper case are the same technique so i'm going to demo it on the um zipper case but it's the exact same technique for the shoes i'm using this really fun just um quarter fabric that you can get at michael's they have a display with tons of different prints so you could have um, purchased this on the supply list or you can just use your own fabric or bandana whatever you want for the bags i'm using this um, really cool spring fabric which is actually a fabric napkin from michael's so you can really use any fabric with these projects i'm going to show you a quick technique for creating an applique this is so fast and i did want to share with you a couple of things too with the same fabric formula, um, you can do all kinds of things on any kind of clothes and it's machine washable here. I've done these patchwork um, pieces just on the shoulders there using doilies. And you could even do, you know, the back of a jean jacket or jeans. It's pretty durable too. So if you do get like a rip in your kids' jeans or grandkids' jeans, you can use the fabric Mod Podge to add a little patch that way. Um, the shoes we're making today are kind of spring and summery, but I did want to show you this fun sort of teen converse style. So you can really, depending upon your fabric and the choices that you make, these projects can be for any age. We've done little baby shoes, big kid shoes, my own shoes, so it's really endless. Um, okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with our the simplest project, which is the little bag today, and then we'll move into the shoes. Now for the shoes, I am going to show you how you create the pattern for those as well. So let's go ahead um, and get myself cleaned up a minute here. <laughs> so what we're going to have is this is our finished design and these bags are so cute these are over in the fashion area at michael's that's the part where you see like fabric dye and fabric paint and blank t-shirts and they're just these great little zipper bags and they come with this fun tassel already on there so the first step is that you're going to want to cut your fabric and we are using like i said this napkin from the spring collection, but you can use any fabric that you want. And what you'll do is just begin by measuring. Well, I will say one thing that's kind of fun about the napkins is they do have a pre hemmed edge, which makes that kind of easy. So it is fun for napkins, but we will be using the Mod Podge to fold over our edges. So the first thing that you're going to do is just measure the part that you want to cover. I'm only covering this uh, cream portion because I really like this blue here. Um, so that's just under five inches. So for that, you would just go in and take your fabric and just measure from the hem. I would be using that hem edge and it's just under five inches. So you'll go ahead and just cut your fabric. And I'm not worrying right now about 
uh, hemming that bottom edge because the fabric Mod Podge will seal that. And the fabric Mod Podge, I am doing it fabric to fabric, but I've also done this many times on, you can adhere fabric to paper mache, glass, terracotta, it's really endless. So you'll go ahead and cut, and then let's take a look. We've got enough here to fold over on this bottom edge. So you need a little over, a little bit over on that edge and a little bit on this edge. So let's go like one more little snip. Here's a question from Ivy Spuma, who's asking, will this work with embroidered patches? Yes, yes, it does. So you can, um, I it, like any kind of patches that you maybe want to put on backpacks or jean jackets or things like that. You can just go ahead and use your fabric mod podge and you would apply it directly to the back of the patch and put it on. You won't need to seal it. You would want to have that patch uh, on there for a good couple of hours before you move your, your jacket or your backpack or something around. But yes, it totally works. I've used it for all kinds of appliques before. So I've got my piece here that's cut out and you can see that I've got that hem part towards the top and on the sides here, you'll wanna just fold those sides over. So basically when you're cutting your piece, it's just gonna be a little bit bigger than the edge. And then if you were sewing, you would sew those down, but we're just gonna use our fabric Mod Podge to glue those flaps down. So this is really fun also, like if you're doing, um, you know, holiday, if you want some quick holiday t-shirts or something, I use some Christmas type fabric and added it to just some really inexpensive t-shirt dresses this uh, winter for my girls. And so it's really fun. You can just do any kind of thing like that. So we'll just add some fabric Mod Podge along that edge, and then you'll just fold it over just like so. And then let's do that to this other side. We did some Halloween ones. I made little ghosts and pumpkin faces. There's another question from Angeli Fernandez. Does it have to be hand washed? No, no, this is machine washable. So um, uh, I glue down everything with this stuff. So sequins, pom-poms, all sorts of things. Some of those outfits, I do hand wash just because they have more delicate things on there. But um, like this jean jacket, can we just cut to the wider shot really fast? This jean jacket here, this has been machine washed many times. So you can do large pieces like this and then do cutouts and all of that patchwork like that is totally machine washable. So that's pretty, you know, it's it's really like a Mod Podge that you can do for fabric to fabric for machine washing. If it's delicates, I use it for hand washing and I hang dry. All right, let's go on back to the hands real quick. Here's another question from Ronnie, I hope I get the last name right, Snivelli. Can you use it in felt to put two pieces together? Well, unfortunately, felt and Mod Podge are not best friends. <laughs> felt is uh, generally made out of polyester. So I will say this, if you're working with wool felt, it will work. If you're working with felt that's like the pieces that are like, you know, four for a dollar or 50 cents, that's usually polyester felt and it doesn't work that well. I have tried and tried. Now, secret tip is that behind the scenes, Plaid is working on a felt, um, I, I really probably shouldn't say that, but, <laughs> but, I, but that is something a lot of people want. So I think that's a continual effort to try to figure out a felt glue. So for this project, you can do it two ways. You can add your Mod Podge directly onto the bag. And remember, this is the fabric Mod Podge. So this is the blue label. This isn't the gloss matte style. This is fabric formula. So you can add it directly to your bag. So usually I add a nice coat to the bag, especially in the center part. 
because you really want that to stick down. And this formula, I'm going to show you, is so thick. It's super thick. It's not like your regular Mod Podge if you're used to it. So we just add that to the bag. One thing about the um, machine washing is that I, I do wait. Um, I wait two days. I wait 48 hours. Um, just for my, that's my own thing. Just, I feel like everything gets really dry that way and has a moment to cure. Okay, let's go ahead and add a little bit more over here. Hope you guys can see that. It's sort of white on white, so that's hard to see. We got a question from Jean. Can it be dried in the dryer? Yes, it can be dried in the dryer. Um, so if I do like sweatshirts or jean jackets or things like that, and I have, you know, just regular old cotton on there, no problem. I, you can machine wash it, machine dry it. Uh, if I'm doing delicates or again, lots of times I glue little sequins and rhinestones and stuff. You can, I just, I personally hang dry those because it's usually more delicate. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got the Mod Podge completely covering that white area. Then what I like to do is on my fabric that I'm gluing down, I really like to get those edges. So the first thing I do is just go in, add a little bit to those edges, just like so. Question from Marie in Vancouver, do you wash the garment first? Yes, um, so two things, yes and no. So like this bag here, I'm not planning on washing because it's just a pencil case, that kind of thing. If you're going to wash, your project, and thank you, that is a very good question, and I should have mentioned that. If it's something that you're gonna wash, you need to wash your fabric and your garment or your base item first. So if it's a, if you're making a grocery short store shopper bag and you know you're gonna wash that every, I don't know, couple of months or whatever, um, you would wanna wash that first. Another question from Dan. Do you put anything inside the bag to stop the Mod Podge going through to the next layer? So this bag has a plastic lining on the inside, so you don't need it. Um, for the most part, what I usually use is just a piece of wax paper like this. Um, if you're working with the heavier fabrics, it's really not necessary. It just doesn't seep through like that. Uh, it's not a super liquidy formula. It's thicker. Uh, if you're doing something that's very thin, you could put a little piece of wax paper through there. But even like a cotton t-shirt, you don't really need a liner. Um, of course, it won't hurt, you know, wouldn't hurt if you did. But just a thin piece of wax paper is plenty. So you can see it doesn't even really drip off. So now I'm just going to line it up. And I like to just make sure that top edge is even first because we could always trim away here if we needed to. So make sure that top edge is even, just like so. And then you really want to, you can kind of even go in, and just sort of press down. And you're gonna want the piece to lay flat while it dries. So if you're doing something on front and back, you know, you would, you would want to do one side and then do the other side the next day. So something like that. So you can see that's all glued down now. And then I have a little bit of this trim. So one thing that I love, like I said, I like to add all sorts of embellishments. And one of my favorites is just doing trims and stuff. So for a trim, I use a, let's see if I can show you that brush better a smaller brush like so and you can just go in and add it right along the edge i've even put some of this when i'm doing a lot of projects i put it in a little squirt bottle like you would think of a mustard bottle or something and you can squirt out a little bead of it uh, fabric mod podge also works great on lampshades so if you're wanting to recover a lampshade, home decor, you know, you can get these canvas pillow blanks and um, you could do just kind of even fabric collage on there, just cut out different pieces and 
You can layer them up like how I did it on the jean jacket. You can just really layer it all the way up. So you can see I just painted a bead of that along the bottom there. And then you can do the same thing. So I have my trim here and you can add a little bit like so, and then just pinch it over, fold it over, and we'll lay that down. Question from Lisa. Does the Mod Podge leave a sheen when dry? What does the jean fabric look like when the jewelry is glued on? Okay, I could take that off and show you. Let's trim that up. Um, Jean, I'm going to take that jacket off and I'll show you what that looks like. It is a gloss formula. So that's one of the reasons why I like to use a much smaller brush because I don't like to have the fabric mod podge go over the edge because you will see, you could see, I guess I should say, a little bit of the residue. So Kim in New Hampshire is curious, what kind of mod podge is that again? This one is the fabric formula. So it's the blue label and this one sticks fabric to fabric. Um, so you can, it's machine washable after it's dried. So you can also use this again, like for home decor lamp shades. I've done it on vases, clay pots. You can even do it on your wood projects. So once you really start playing around with fabric Mod Podge, you know, the scrapbooking paper aisle it used to be like my go-to. Now I, I go to the fabric section first and I use it on so many different things now. You see that cute little bag, so that tassel. So you can see how quickly you can do fun little things like this. If you're doing like, these are great like bridesmaids gifts. If you're trying to coordinate, um, you know, presents, things like that. Even if you use like seasonal fabrics for different types of bags. And then you'll just let this dry flat. For this one, I'm not gonna top coat because I'm not planning on machine washing it, but I am gonna show you how you top coat on the shoe project. Um, Dee Dee had a question, how long do you let it dry? So this, um, I'm gonna let dry for two hours before I move it around. I like to let it dry for 48 hours before I actually use it. It just gives it, it's a much thicker formula. I mean, I think you can see it's like, a very thick paste. That's why it doesn't really seep through that much either. So for me, I like to just let it dry thoroughly for a couple of days. So you just set it aside and let it dry like that. Summer had a question. What's the difference in ingredients between fabric Mod Podge and traditional Mod Podge? Well, the fabric Mod Podge has properties that are for bonding it to fabric. So like if it's the regular it's, it's just a totally different chemical formula. So if it's the, the, the type that you're gonna use for paper is, is so much thinner and it won't stick to the fabric and it definitely wouldn't stick um, through a washing. So I don't know if you can see that. Um, I, for this design, I applied the fabric Mod Podge directly to the doily and place the doily down. I didn't put any of it on the actual base denim. So I just put it on the doily and then glued the doily down. And so you don't really get that, um, you know, kind of shine coming through. Let me see if I can show you back here. So I've got here, I've got lace that I glued down. Um, not really, seeing, I was pretty neat on this design. <laughs> So I'm not seeing a lot of it on the edges, but all of this, you can see a little bit there, the sheen maybe, right? Question from, I think it's UNMIS on this. Does it separate and require stirring? Can it dry up in the bottle? Um, I've never had it dry up. Um, it, it doesn't really separate. Uh, I've had, I, I would say no, it doesn't really separate in the, in the bottle. Um, it's it's pretty thick. One thing that could happen is it could dry, you know, a, along this edge, like here, and you might like have to kind of pull that off. Uh, one tip that I use on mine is I just take a little bit of Vaseline and I put it along the edge there before I put my cap on. And so that really helps with any of your glues or paints or something like that. 
um, you can just add a little bit and then it helps it to not get stuck down. So let me move this aside real quick. And let's see, maybe we'll do the hat really quick. Well, the shoes are very in-depth. So here's this really fun, just quick way to make an applique. Now this fabric is woven, so you get more of that sort of fringy edge, but I really like that style. So I went with that. If you didn't want that fringy edge, you would wanna just add a little bit of Mod Podge around there to seal it. Um, it's the type of fabric that creates that because it's a woven fabric. So for doing something like this, you could cut out any shape, but of course, the simple heart shape is so easy to do. It's great for any little scrap. You can do this on jeans, back of jean jackets. You know, if you're going to like, I don't know, Disneyland or something like that, you can get fabric that is um, themed or, you know, now they have licensed everything. I just saw, you know, Star Wars fabric and stuff. So you can just cut out one little small graphic and you can apply that to whatever you want. Summer had a question. Can you repeat that about Vaseline? Yeah. So Vaseline, like if on a bottle like this, if you rub a little Vaseline, not too much, not too much, just a little bit, a little bit of Vaseline right around there. Then when you put your cap on, your cap won't glue down. It creates a barrier. So sometimes you're like, oh, I can't get my Mod Podge open. <laughs> if you just use a little Vaseline on that outer edge, that will help with that. One more question from Rhonda's Galaxy 821. I'm a quilter too. If I wash dry fabric to start a project, I've always been told not to use fabric softener or dryer sheet. Is that good practice for using this Mod Podge? I would say yes. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, so I am a textile science major. I studied textile science and design at Ohio State and um, actually did a whole report on fabric softener. <laughs> um, so it's, it's not good for, you know, it's great for your laundry once something is sewn or glued or made or something like that. But anytime that you're doing that beforehand, it's not great because if I have a piece of fabric like this and I use fabric softener on it, I'm actually, the fabric softener is embedding um, very tiny, almost like lotion for fabric. Think about it like that. So when you're putting your glue down, you're not putting it straight onto the fabric surface. Or let's say with quilting, you might be using a stitch witchery or something like that. You, you're actually sticking that then to that uh, lotion type, um, it's not really lotion, but I hope you understand what I mean. So you're actually sticking it to the fabric softener. So it would have more of a tendency to pull up and not actually glue down all the way. Question from Samira Abdo. Does the material slash fabrics become stiff once Mod Podge dries? Uh, I would say it's a little stiff. It depends upon your fabric. So the thicker your fabric, let me show you this bag here. So um, is this the one I, oh, sorry, that one's still wet. Let me not show you that one. Let me show you the dry one. So this is the dry one. And you know, it's not, I mean, this is canvas and this is a thicker fabric. So it's not really that stiff. I did another tote bag that I will just show you really quickly here. Oh, sorry, I hit the camera. So here's a big shopper. Uh, and again, I used Fabric Mod Podge to glue down this trim also. Uh, and this is a very lightweight cotton. This cotton is super thin. And you know the only stiffness is from the bag behind it. So you can do large scale pieces like this. And again, all your trims you can glue down too. Question from Suzanne, did you say you could use this with glass also? Could you say an example? Yeah, um, I don't have, uh, let's see. I'm, I'm looking around my house real quick. I don't have anything here, but um, let, me, let me see. Um, for example, let's, let's pretend like this bowl, this is a plastic bowl one of my projects for next week that we're going to be making over with torn book pages. So, you know, you just never know what we're making over over here. So if you wanted to cover this with fabric, you would just apply your fabric Mod Podge directly to the bowl. Okay, I'll go ahead and just 
show you. Let's say you have some spring designs. So you could do large pieces, or let's say you had, um, you know, florals that you wanted to cut out, that kind of thing. Go ahead. I know this is for the baseball hat, but I'll cut another heart out. You can go ahead and just stick your design directly onto any kind of thing. Now, this obviously you wouldn't be putting in the machine to wash it, um, but it would be hand washable once it's all cured and dried. So I would let this dry. For something like this, if you wanted to, you could top coat it. It's really not necessary though. It just depends. Like if I was going to be, let's say you wanted to do a chip and dip, right? Something like that. I would top coat it just by adding a layer of Mod Podge right on the top and then letting that dry. And once that's dry, it will have a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not going to be super glossy. And then you could just keep layering up. Now for something like this, I would smooth out all these brush strokes. And honestly, I probably would have just applied it to the heart shape, but you can apply, you know, fabric to really just about anything. I've done full on terracotta pots with it, like those glass cylinder bases. They're really, I did a whole, like a friend's wedding where I did about 10 of them for centerpieces and we used the same fabric, you know, just glued it right around. I mean, really it's endless what you can use it for. Marie in Vancouver. Is it best to apply Mod Podge to both components or just one? Uh, for me, it kind of depends upon the project. Uh, for the bags like this, or where I'm covering a large surface, like here's a tote bag here, okay? So on a large surface like this, I like to apply it, let's flip it over. I like to apply it to the whole surface. Otherwise, sometimes if you don't, you might get like a bubble or a little pull away in that center spot. And that would be like right here. I also think it's easier with some fabrics, like especially these woven fabrics, to apply it to the base first. Always make sure you get your edges really good though. So like when I was doing this bag, um, you probably saw that I really went ahead and did these edges extra. So I did the edges on the actual base piece and on the fabric. And then, you know, just really push it down. Uh, but for something like this hat, uh, I'm not going to be machine washing this. I really just want a fun applique on there. It's really best just to go in and apply it to the fabric and then stick the fabric on. So let's go ahead and cut that heart out one more time. Let's see, how did, how did I do with my heart? Not too bad. I might've made it too tall for this hat though. Too tall. All right, let me cut that down a little bit. You guys have great questions. Thank you so much. And you just keep asking and we'll get them answered for you. Okay, so let's go ahead. And I also like to start in the center of my project and work my way to the edges. I'm using some wax paper on the bottom there. And everybody loves these hat makeovers. I wish I could throw pictures up. I did uh, last year for spring, we did straw hats that I found um, on clearance. And then, you know, you can just add any of your, you can cut flowers, all different kinds of things. So there's our little heart shape. Rebecca Haynes is asking, soap and water cleanup? Yeah, so soap and water cleanup. Go ahead and spin that around. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I don't think I was quite under the camera for that. Uh, yes, yeah, soap and water. So for your paint brushes, you want to do soap and water cleanup right away um, because it is a fabric formula. So depending upon the bristles that you're using, it will want to glue your bristles together. So soap and water cleanup is fine. Um, and, and you know, if you get it even quickly, you don't need any soap. Just water is fine for paint brushes. So you can see just like that. And then you'll just let that dry. And once it's dry, you've got <laughs> the same looking hat. Here's the dry one. 
so they kind of look the same, <laughs> but this one is still wet. So again, I would set this aside and let this dry, but it's a thick formula, so you can even let it dry upright. You know, it's not, it's, it's not going to slide off. It's a very thick formula. Okay, so now I want to show you about shoes. Shoes are like, I'm going to go ahead and clean up my hands real fast. Shoes are um, so popular. I've been doing shoe makeovers for a while now, and everybody, they just want to see it again. So I'm going to go slowly, and um, I want you to, I really want to be able to teach you how you make a pattern for your shoes. This technique works on any kind of shoe. I'm doing these canvas shoes but you can do this on faux leather shoes. You can do it on leather shoes, but you know, certainly like an inexpensive faux leather shoe, um, it's a really fun, easy makeover. Uh, again, really fun to do if you've got holiday fabrics. You can do it on these cute, like kind of more teen, I guess, style shoes. It really just depends upon the fabric that you're choosing. So this is like star fabric with these, you know, little sparkles in there. You don't need very much of it. So if you get one of these like fat quarters or quarters of fabric, I, you can pretty much do a pair of shoes with one of these. So this is like $1.49, I think. So you really barely need any fabric for this. So even if you find one that's a little bit more splurgy, you're only using a tiny bit. So the materials that we're gonna use to create our pattern, let me show you the paisley shoes that we're going to do. So I'm only doing the tops of the shoes on this pair because I wanted to keep the backs the white color, but you could certainly cover the back too. And the same patterning technique works for doing the back of the shoe also. So the first thing that I like to do is uh, stuff my shoe. So these shoes have some paper in them, but I like to just go ahead and get them stuffed. And the reason why I like to stuff them is so that when you're patterning the shoe, you get a nice firm um, underbelly there. So it's, it's good. If you don't have that in there, then when you're patterning, it tends to crush and flatten and you don't get a very good pattern. And Question from Angelique Fernandez. Can you do paper on fabric with this montage? You can, um, you can't, the paper isn't gonna be washable, um, but you can um, like on these tote bags and stuff, or these types of canvas bags, you can do um, napkins, paper napkins to them. They're, that's really gonna be a hand wash though. Um, and you can do paper napkins onto the shoes as well. Um, Question from M Hardy. Uh, can you stick over the design once it's dry? Uh, you mean like layer another um, layer another piece over it, like a collage almost? Is that what you're thinking? I'll show you on the jean jacket before we dive into the patterning. Um, so like here, these are all different pieces that are layered up. So these are cutouts and they're all just layered and layered and, and collaged over each other. Oh yeah, another question from Kim is, why would you not put the Mod Podge on top of the fabric design after you attach it to the shoe? Uh, there's two reasons. So the sealing of the fabric on the shoe, we're gonna seal the fabric because the shoe is gonna get wear and tear and you're gonna um, you know, be out in the elements and things like that on something like the zipper bag or the tote bag where I'm probably not gonna really be washing it. The first reason why I don't do it is because you really don't need to use your product up like if you're not gonna be washing it. So unless you wanted it to have like a shiny finish. So for this, I just don't personally want that shiny finish. And for me, if I'm just putting it on there, it's a little bit of a waste of the product. Um, because I'm not gonna be machine washing it. Now, if I was gonna be machine washing this, I would need to seal it. Again, like with the shoes, I'm gonna show you how you seal it um, because the shoes are gonna get wear and tear. It might be raining, you know, you might step in a mud puddle and need to wipe them off or something like that. So you would definitely wanna seal the shoes. If you're gonna do like the jean jacket, the jean jacket is sealed because I'm machine washing it. Um, 
But for some of the projects in like home decor projects, you really, you just don't need to because if you're not gonna like lampshades, you don't need to seal a lampshade at all. It's not going anywhere. I've got projects that I've made eight years ago that are still good. So it's, you just don't need to. Question from M Hardy. Sorry, wanted to know if I could machine or hand stitch over the design once it is dry. Oh yes, I do that all the time. So you can do embroidery over it or you can highlight different areas, things like that. You can glue anything like that to it. Sandra Phillip, could you seal the shoes with waterproofing? Yeah, so some people um, use the spray, um, Oh goodness, I can't think what it's called. It, you get it for like ski coats. It's like a Gore-Tex spray. Um, now that, if you live in a climate that's very rainy or very snowy, um, that would, you could go that extra step. I personally do three top coats of the Mod Podge and I have not had any problems. Now I'm not going out in a snowstorm in them. So I think it really just depends upon where you live also. Patricia, does that only work on canvas shoes or shoes that have a slight velvet texture? Uh, you could try velvet. I, I wouldn't 100% endorse that because it might look kind of lumpy. Uh, if you were doing a thicker fabric or a more textured fabric over velvet, you could probably get away with it. But if you're doing something thin like this, it might look kind of lumpy under there. Um, but you can definitely do like faux leather shoes, any kinds like that for sure. So I want to show you how we do our pattern for the front part. And the same technique is applied if you want to do a pattern for the back part. Um, and really for any shoe, same thing here for this shoe. I did a pattern just for this part here. Uh, and if you wanted to just do like small appliques, you wouldn't need a pattern. You could just cut out, like let's say you wanted to keep the white there, you could just cut out you know, your paisley shape or a little graphic from licensed fabric or something like that, and then just apply it the same way we did the heart on the baseball hat. But for this, this is what is a little bit tricky, so I really like to share this with you. So I'm taking a piece of wax paper and I'm just going to wrap it around my shoe. And I kind of, I cut off a bigger piece because I like to kind of wrap it all the way and sort of crinkle it up like that and just kind of create a handle for holding it. You really want it to be as tight around the shoe as possible, like so. Uh, wax paper works best for this. And actually I just use this old kind of dollar store style because it's thin and it's really great for patterning. So you don't need to use anything that's expensive. Then what you're gonna do is go in with your pencil. And I do a pencil just because in case I make a mistake and it pushes through, I don't wanna ink up my shoe. Pencil, I can still erase off. And you're just gonna go right around that bottom edge and I'm holding it tight at the back there. You could even staple it together if you didn't feel confident or you could uh, use some tape just to tape it around, just like so. So I've got that first line there. I hope you could see that good. And I wasn't pushing down very hard, just going with the flow right around that shoe. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here, kind of push down so I can see that and just trace off. And don't worry, almost every time I make a mistake, and I've done this probably a hundred times. So if you make a mistake, you can always just piece a little bit on. And I always test my pattern before I cut from my fabric. Just keep going around. Patricia says you're an excellent instructor. Oh, thank you. There we go. Okay, now this is the magic part. You just take it off and hopefully you can see those lines. Now we've created our pattern. Very simple. And this works for almost any shape of shoe. I've done this on cowboy boots, all kinds of things. Now you just flatten it out and you can go in with your scissors because we're not folding anything over you'll just cut directly on your pencil lines. 
And these are great, like, you know, for baby shoes, they all have those little canvas shoes. You can do these for gifts for people. You know, it's, it's really, it's fun. Once you start making them, I now I'm always looking for shoes in the clearance bin. I <laughs> like looking for plain. I, I will say that plain shoes do work the best. Um, and you can find these many times, you know, on sale at the end of the season. So I always grab a few up. I'm doing white shoes. You can do this on colored shoes, dark shoes. It, it really doesn't matter. So you'll just cut your pattern out. Just like so. Question from Cindy. Do you need to create a pattern for the left and right shoe or can you use the same pattern for both? Oh, that's a great question. So um, it really depends upon the shoe. So I'll show you. These shoes here, left and right, actually end up being the same. Um, so there's that one, okay? And then I can use that same shape over on this one. Occasionally, you flip it over like so. Nope, see, flipped over, that one doesn't work. So it works the same on both of these shoes. Now that is definitely not true with all pairs of shoes. So a lot of, these are kids shoes. So when you're doing kids shoes, you'll probably find that the pattern is very similar and you can use the same one on both shoes. When you start talking about women's shoes or boots or shoes that have a pointy toe, the left and right will be different. So um, if that's the case, I always go in. Um, this one, I'm not worrying about it, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. It's easy to see where my pencil line is. I make a mark left. Left or right, okay? Just make a mark on there. Patty S is asking, can we see the pattern against the dark background, please? Yeah, let's see. Let me find something dark. <laughs> okay, I've got, I've got glue mat. And let's see if this works. Oh, here's a bag, yeah. Does that help? So that's the shape. Almost looks like a Star Trek logo, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so then I've gone ahead and I've cut a piece out, but I wanna just show you quickly how you would do that. So one thing that's important is your placement. So here's the pattern, okay? And let's say, okay, I want, I, first of all, I like to do, it on the angle. And the reason why you want to do it on the angle is because you want your fabric to wrap around the shoe without giving you any um, trouble. So sometimes fabric might have a harder time going around this way. It really just depends upon the fabric that you're using. Uh, but for straight up cotton, this is called doing it on the bias. And on the bias will give you a little bit more stretch to go around to the sides. So when you're looking at the design, try to think about um, doing it on, the, on an angle like that. And then the other thing that you wanna look at is what part do you wanna feature on the toe? So certainly if you're doing something that has like a floral or something that you wanna have featured, this is the toe. So you just wanna make sure you're putting that where what you want to have featured at the toe area. So for something like this, it's probably that paisley area there. But that's a personal choice and um, you know will vary depending upon the fabric that you're using. So you just pin that down and then you just cut it out. Now I've pre-cut it out so you don't have to watch me cut again. So you just pin it down and go ahead and cut it out. And uh, one thing I did want to show you what I do before um, before I cut my fabric is I do put my pattern down and I test it. And sometimes if I haven't traced it exactly perfect, I just go in and tape a little extra piece there and add it again. Or honestly, I just pattern it over again. You saw how quickly it really, it, it patterns very fast. So now for this, we'll go ahead. I want to show you how we put it down on the shoe. It's really simple. Um, 
And again, the edges are going to be important here. So I like to go ahead and do this left shoe. I like to in my, and for, I keep the shoe stuffed for patterning and for putting the fabric down. So any of your big areas, I like to put the Mod Podge down first and get those areas filled in. For this pattern, I'm going all the way over that edge. You don't have to. It just depends upon, you know, what part of the shoe you want to have shown. I'll show you on this shoe that has laces. I only patterned right up to that stitching line because I wanted to see that stitching line still. So every shoe is a little different. And like, I didn't do this back part here because I wanted that to stay black. So I only did it right up to that. So those are all the choices that you're gonna make depending upon the shoe you know, that you wanna cover. Um, I will say that cotton fabric works best uh, this works with flannels also, wools, uh, satins, silks are not going to work very well. They're going to, the Mod Podge will make marks and it will um, look very streaky. So I'm going to go straight up to that edge. And don't worry if you go over the shoe a little bit, that's fine onto the rubber part. I use baby wipes and just wipe that away. So it's better to get it right up to the edge and go over a tiny bit and wipe it away than it is to not get to that edge. Question from Angela Fernandez. Sorry, I got disconnected. Is the fabric cut the same size as the pattern for the shoes? Exact same size, yeah. We're not folding over. It's not like if you were sewing and you would be folding over a little hem or something like that. It's cut to the exact same size. So you don't add any seam allowance or anything like that. Okay, so I've got my shoe totally covered. And then I'm going to go in for shoes. I like to do the shoe and the fabric. So let's go ahead and add our fabric Mod Podge down. And I like to make sure that I'm getting those edges. That is the most important part because if an edge pulls up, that's when your fabric could potentially come up. So you really want to make sure the edges are good. Now I have some of these that I have worn forever. So once you get this down, it really lasts. Okay, let me make sure. Let me move this over so I'm centered for you better. There we go. And for this, just go ahead. You have a little bit of time to wiggle it around. So I like to just sort of first line it up with my top section here. And I'm going to go ahead and pull some of this out for my placement, and then I'm going to put it back in for when it dries. I should have pulled that out earlier. There we go. So you can go ahead and put your hand in there, and you'll just begin to wiggle your fabric into position. You do have plenty of time to move it around. It's not like when you're working with paper and you get it down and then it's kind of stuck. You do have time to wiggle it. We'll just keep wiggling it till you get a nice clean line there. And I always keep a little pair of scissors on hand. Uh, if you do use your scissors, make sure you wipe them clean right afterwards because you don't want the Mod Podge to dry on your blades. Question from RM, can the Mod Podge be used on thicker cotton fabrics? Yes, it actually works great on thick fabric. Um, it works, thin fabric is really good on shoes because you're, working around all these different curved areas and and this is a kid's shoe so the more advanced like women's shoes have a lot more shape going on so the thinner fabrics are easier like if you're a lot of people like to do a decorative heel so you can even do if you have high heeled shoes you can even do this just on a high heeled shoe and just do the heel part okay so i think we're looking pretty good so i'm going to pretend like my fabric was a little bit um too big. So let me just pretend for a minute. So if, well, it is actually, it's a little bit big right here. So you could do two things. You can fold over, but I'm going to just trim. So at this point, get it into position. Sometimes the fabric likes to grow on you a little bit. And then you can always go in 
make sure I'm under there for you. And just trim away. Another question from RM, you'll love this question. What else can we use Mod Podge for? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> we even have a Mod Podge resin now, you guys. I mean, it's really grown. So there you go. So now at this point, okay, like I said, see, now at this point, you want to clean your scissors. I'm not going to do that, but well, I can show you what I do actually. Let's, where's my baby wipes? Do I have them? There we go. So to clean off your scissors, I just use the inexpensive baby wipes and you just wipe the blade just like so. And then they are good to go again. Wrong B, can you fold under extra fabric? Yeah, absolutely. And you can just seal it with um, the fabric Mod Podge. So like we did on the edges of the bag, I'm not sure if you were, um, if you were here for this project, but this is folded over the way you would do a hem, but instead of sewing it, we just sealed it with fabric Mod Podge. From Sharon Mills, is this Mod Podge variety good for yarn bombing an object? You can. Now, um, it doesn't work as great with polyester yarns. So um, same way, it kind of doesn't work that great with felt. Um, but I have done, I did a wreath, like a circle wreath, and I yarn wrapped it and I use fabric Mod Podge. You can also do um, like if you have a cotton uh, fabric. So this is pretty fun. I know I just cleaned those scissors. They gotta be here. So let's pretend like this was a big piece of fabric. Get those pattern off of there. Um, so what you wanna do is start by tearing it. So just cut a little thing there and get that first torn edge. So if you have a big long piece of fabric, right? You can tear that piece and then let's say, I don't know, we'll do like one inch strips. So then you could tear it and pretend like it's really, 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 really long. So you create these fabric strips and then those are really fun. Find something else to pretend like it's a wreath. So let's say this was a big circle wreath. You can wrap the fabric strips like that. And it's really fun just to make something it has a little bit sort of um, rustic or country flair a little bit, but if even like muslims or light spring prints, it's a really fun way to cover uh, one of those plain wreaths kind of things. It's just, you can do any kind of things like this. And this is also jeans, like old denim. I did a whole pillow where I did a patchwork pillow just with old cut up jeans. So there's so many different things you can do. Okay, so now once the shoe, once you have your fabric down on the shoe, let's take a look at that close up. Then you'll be ready to top coat or let it dry a little bit. So first we'll stuff it back up uh, so that it dries in sort of the shape of the shoe. That's important. Okay, and I've got these shoes here that I wanna show you how we do the ceiling on. So these shoes have dried for two hours. So you wanna make sure that your initial fabric dries for two hours before you move on to top coating. For the top coating, I like to do three top coats. One, two, three. Um, for maximum, you know, I grew up with all the elements, winter, spring, summer, fall. So if you're in that climate, it is important that you do the three coats. Um, if you're just doing some funny shoes for a costume or an event, you, you may not want to use all your product for that. You'll probably be fine, you know, for a little bit of time. But if you really want something that can take some wear and tear, just do the three coats. So what you're going to do is go right over the fabric. And again, really catch those edges. You want to make sure those edges are sealed down. From Samira Abdu. I'd love to see more of the crafts you created. Are you on social media? Yes, yep, I have. Um, so I make videos for Plaid every week with Mod Podge. And those are on um, my YouTube channel and on Plaid's YouTube channel. And that's called Make It With Mod Podge. Um, and I have my own website is kathyfillion.com. And that's C-A-T-H-I-E. 
F I L I A N. Oh, she just posted it. Oh, thank it's you. Yep. Yes, thank you. Kim and Johanna, would you need to mod podge on the white canvas part? No. This part, you mean? Or, um, oh, the edges? Maybe she means the edges. No, not really. Just go ahead and get those, you know, just get those edges good like that. There we go. You can kind of see this is one nice thick coat. And this is going to dry perfectly clear, but with a tiny bit of sheen. It's not going to be super shiny and glossy. It's not going to look um, glassy at all. It'll just have a little bit of sheen to it. Now, if you're in a situation where you've gotten a little bit on the edge, I just go in and I wipe it while it's wet. You could do soap and water on a rag. I just, I use these baby wipes a lot. Rhonda's Galaxy 821. I think there's going to be a run of Mod Podge. <laughs> it's one of my favorite formulas. I feel like it's a formula that nobody ever pays attention to. And I don't understand why, because there it's so, you know, fashion craft. For me, I love fashion crafting. So like I said earlier, I was a textile science major and design. And actually, when I first got started working, I worked for a designer named Betsy Johnson, and she was famous for making her own fabrics. And so for me, like being able to work with fabric and Mod Podge at the same time, it like opened up a whole world of different types of projects where, you know, before it was like I was always looking at napkins or scrapbook paper or wrapping paper. It was always paper onto something. And this really changes your creativity. You know, you can take a plain tote bag like this and these bags go on sale at Michael's all the time. You can get them in a two pack even. And, you know, you can really create some custom looks. And one of the things I love, if you have a Cricut machine or if you have stenciling or any of those die cutter machines or paint, you, I mean, you could even cut letters out of fabric. But a lot of these bags, like there's a line on this bag. So it's very simple where that seam is. You can just cover a portion of it. It's so easy to mark off. And then you could add names here. You know, if you're taking a vacation, you could add a, you know, name of a place you're going. I mean, it's really endless what you can do. Loretta had a question. How long do you wait between coats and mod products for the shoes? Okay, so this shoe here, then I would wait another two hours for it to dry. And if I wasn't busy, I would probably throw another top coat on it. And then I like it to dry overnight for my third top coat. I just, I don't wanna put too much wet on wet. So you really wanna give each layer a chance to dry. Two hours is enough. Personally, before I put that third top coat on, I let it dry overnight just to let it cure. Because if you put it wet on wet, you're not gonna get that really durable cure. Michelle and Dan, if it turns out that an edge does come up, can you just remod podge it yep. down or is there a different way to handle that? That's it. You just go in. Let's see. I'll just pull, pull a little bit up. Oh, see, I can't even look at that. I can I can't even get it up without. Well, there we go. That's I mean, that was everything I could do to pull that. But if that happened, you would just add a little dot and go ahead and glue it right back down just like so and cricket says she's wearing Betsy johnson glasses right now ah, how fun <laughs> i was very young that was my first job out of college and it was absolutely amazing it was a very fun place to work so ivy spoon i loved it thank you so much will there be a mod podge class in the future yes yeah, so this yeah so let's or, she means resin mod podge oh sure i think there is yeah and we have um on our YouTube channel, we have lots of resin. Michaels has all of our resin formulas and um, we have lots of different videos. I know personally, I'm gearing up to do two more um, resin videos for spring. So I'm gonna be doing tumblers, well, three. I'm gonna be doing tumblers, jewelry and home decor. So I know that's happening. So this pretty much wraps up our projects today. I think we'll go ahead and go back to the other camera really quick. Um, so I'll just recap uh, quickly. This was the fabric Mod Podge formula. So this is fabric to fabric, and we all learned now that it's machine washable. Uh, depending upon 
your application for it, you may or may not want to top coat. For me personally, for most of my home decor projects, I do not top coat because I think it's kind of a little bit of a waste of product and I've spent my good money on products. So I don't really, I don't like to waste my craft supplies. So if it's something I'm not gonna be machine washing, I don't top coat it. Um, so like pencil cases and stuff like that. I make a lot of stuff for my kids. Sometimes I don't even top coat t-shirts or dresses. If I know that um, sometimes I recycle something and I'm just doing, they have an event at school that they need something for and I put it on there and I've actually had great success with hand washing and it doesn't come off. But if you're going to be machine washing something over and over again, like a, a jean jacket or a sweatshirt or something like that, then definitely top coat. Um, I did wanna share with you some ideas about fabrics that are out there for creating custom stuff. If you are way into some sports team or something like that, you know, all these different movies and teams have licensed fabrics now. So it's a really fun way to create some custom looks very easily. So look on those clearance racks for plain t-shirts and shoes and tote bags, and you can really customize it for whatever you're doing. We just went to Disneyland and I did Disneyland t-shirts. I just did sort of a Mickey shape and I just cut it out of fabric. So there's really so many different types of projects that you can do. Um, so we sh I showed you about the jean jacket and I'll just show you on the back again, how you can patchwork things up. Again, it works great on jeans also. So if you want to do some fun sort of trendy jeans, I really love the doilies on the, on the corners there. I use those same doilies on metal planters. So, you know, it's not even just denim. I, I put this on glass, metal, wood, you know, anything. We did our really cute shoe makeover and learned about the patterning. And then um, again, so fun for appliques. So, it, you know, if you, whatever, you can cut whatever you want out and add it to a hat. And then this is one of my favorite. These I just make all the time, but these little zipper bags. And you only just need a tiny bit of fabric just to finish them off. And you can glue your trims, sequins, rhinestones, whatever you want with it. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'll be back with a couple more classes um, for Michaels. And I did like five classes last year. So those are all in the Michaels archives on their websites and on um, YouTube. So if you go to their YouTube channel and you go to their classes, if you type in my name, then those should pop up. But I've got dimensional magic ones, all, all different um, beach ones and all different types of classes. So Thank you guys. I hope I got everybody's questions answered. If I didn't, you can always drop me a line on my blog or on any of our social media channels. Thank you guys.